Howdy friends, my name's Carl, and today I've got Mike again with me. Uh, Hello. <laughs> how are you, Mike? You all right? I'm good, how are you? I'm all right, I'm good. Excited. Another episode. They come round so quick. They do. It's great. I love it. Yeah. Excited um, to uh, go into our topic today. Yeah, it's nice to go into this after being a vampire all week on V Rising. So to okay. come and just be kind of like a nice farmer for a bit and talk about that is quite nice, isn't it? So, yeah. Are, are you okay with the sunlight behind you? you you've <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, good. Yeah, if you haven't seen any of the videos that I put out recently, I'm playing a game called V Rising. Mike's also playing the game. You can catch us on our Twitch streams. Yeah, quite a lot. YouTube's, you... Twitch, Twitters, yeah. everything. There'll be links in the bottom. But yeah, today, howdy friends, the ranchers. We thought we'd talk about dungeons, exploring, and monsters. And I thought it'd be a good one for you, Mike, because you love dungeons. I do. I am a certified level seven dungeoneer. Oh, yeah. Um, in the National Dungeoneering Association. Yeah, right. Wow. So. Uh, what a fact. What a fact I've just learned about you. So you just learned that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm. it's, it's an interesting um, topic, especially surrounding the game of the ranchers. Yeah. Uh, with how they're going to incorporate it, yeah. how it's going to be, what we expect, and what, what they're going to give us from it. Um, yeah, what I was surprised at, and I know when we reacted initially to the trailer, was this bit that we're seeing now on screen with uh, blowing that sh statue down, there's doors into this like dungeon and then we get mm. that amazing kind of bit where he's running up like now and then there's just the big guy made of fire like let's go so cool yeah um and i'm wondering what it, like like we said we don't know how they're going to fit it into the world but i wonder what incentive you're going to have for going out and fighting something like that well that that was one of my uh, things when when you mentioned we were going to talk about this in in the today's podcast, I was trying to think of what obviously the incentive to get materials makes sense. Uh, we we've seen that in things like Stardew, you know, when you're going into the mines and stuff like that kind of loop of that's where the copper is and that's where all these kind of materials are. Yeah. But what is the incentive? And I guess almost a question of what what rewards can they give you that is going to give you the incentive to go in and risk your life yeah. essentially. Yeah. So. And what sort of rewards could it be that won't penalise players who do don't want to do this sort of stuff? You know, like because there might be yeah. people who are just like, look, I love the look of it for the sort of Sims aspect and the ranching side, but I don't want. I'm not interested in doing fighting and fighting big monsters. So. Yeah. I'm interested to see how they balance it. Um, Cause yeah, the only thing it'd be easy to be able to say, well, you get all the best gear from dungeons. And if you fight that monster, yeah. you're going to get some great gear, but then it's just like, well, then you're penalizing the players who can't do that or don't want to do that. Yeah. Which, which makes a lot of sense. And like I said, the, the resource side of it makes perfect sense. Like you say, find the, Cobalt resource, the copper resource. Like, but the, yeah, I'm trying to work out when you defeat a dungeon boss, if it is like that kind of, well, we can see there's that guy at the end. Yeah. And defeating him, what are you actually, what could you actually get that is going to be a benefit to a game like the ranchers? And I honestly don't know the answer, like, yeah. off the top of my head. Because in a typical dungeon game, or where dungeons are present, it's usually armor, weapons, like these yeah. kind of things that enhance combat. So in a not combat heavy game like the ranches, I wonder how they will, or what even the loot pool will be. You know, yeah. what's... I, I wonder if like it'll be coming to, because it is a multiplayer game and i think they've said there's going to be like an auction market 
I don't know. Right. I'm sure yeah, I've seen that players. on the uh, website. I'm sure it's on the ranchers' website. I, I'll have a look. Quite potentially. Chatting. But yeah, yeah, maybe that's um, what they'll do to get around the people who don't want to dungeon in. Yeah. So then maybe you could be an explorer, and that's your role. And then you can sell that to the auction house, and then they'll pick it up. You know, like that they, they yeah. can buy it from there. But um, no, I can't. It's, it's... Oh yeah, auction market. You can sell your resources to other players via the online au auction market to maximize your pro uh, profits. The auction market yeah. is directly accessible from within the game and from the companion application on iOS and Android. Nice. So you can do so... a bit of trading whilst on the go as well. That's yeah. That's, uh neat little feature um but yeah the i was i was racking my brain today what before we started about the yeah when we get to the 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 part of the video with the the, the boss as i'll refer him to uh, and yeah. there is a big kind of dwarven style chest behind him um yeah which obviously has loot in it um, I can't imagine it being like an exclusive dining table for your house, uh, or like yeah. a particular. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. maybe that is what it will have. But how? Why? Then it's kind of like, well, why does he have a, a schematic for a, a new fridge? Or you know, do you yeah. know what I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. Why would you be getting just sort of your basic household goods from this dungeon? Yeah, you know, yeah, like this, this infernal demon. He, he loves hoarding plates, uh, but it, you know, what a cool character lucky. design as well. Like, oh, fantastic! Yeah, yeah really I, cool. I, I really like it. Um, and it, which says a lot because dungeon bosses, types of bosses, they've all been done before. So to actually make something that looks a bit unique but yet yeah. familiar. Like, I've never seen anything like that, but it does look kind of like that Infernal yeah. Demon-esque. Like, the design is really quite fantastic. Yeah, and I, yeah, I do really like that chest. And I wonder if there's any sort of lore behind these glyphs. Maybe they're just sort of monster glyphs, but it'd be nice if it like that was part of the exploration as well, of to sort of decipher what the mystery is around this, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, why they still exist in a, a normal modern time. world. Yeah. yeah like... Um, yeah, and you were talking about like the uh, ex there. Try and get my words out. The exploration aspect of it, and how I know they've said they will be uh, procedurally generated instances and dungeons. Yeah. Um, how different they're going to be from one dungeon to another to keep you actually even interested in going in. We talked about in the previous episode about the different types of unique monsters and there was 20 and so there were, there is variety but whether that loop is for somebody yeah. who wants the dungeon here there because if how I was, different can they be? Do you know if I, mean? I was developing it, I'd have one for each element. Like, so we've got, yeah. like, the fire one there. Then we'd have, like, a water-based one where you're fighting a kraken out in sea on one of your boats. You know what I mean? Because then you can, like, do up your boat so then you can go out and fight it. Like, this is obviously yeah. the fire one because you're just in the yeah. depths of hell. Um, Yeah, like an air one that you just... I don't know what how you do that, but maybe some jumping puzzles where you've got to get to the top of a tower and you're fighting a big bird or something like that, you know? But there's look like there there seems to be world puzzles when you turn up because like here um I'll let it play on that in the background to the right there is like a turnstile sort of thing which looks like you'd need four people to turn it yeah and you see that yeah, there to like the right yeah 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 but he instead is blowing up this entrance so it looks like there could be multiple ways in that that's a good point yeah if there was enough of you to maybe open it that that uh winged angels statue would maybe open yeah and you have that how yeah, it to go through. obviously being by himself and if they do things like that that's really cool i'm i'm always a fan of any game where it gives you multiple ways to solve the same problem yeah you know like you can approach it you know all guns blazing stealthy 
teamwork, all those kind of things. So yeah, that, that, that's the first time I noticed. And the other bit I noticed when we were re-watching is that he lights the bomb with the torch. Oh, right. So cool. the, the torch goes down and then he like swipes it and then it's lit. Oh yeah, look at that! Like that's nice, that cool, isn't it? So yeah. it means that it's sort of there's the physics in the game of so you know what I mean that uh, elements can interact with each other. So you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah so that's cool. So, yeah, and Class I like that. the idea that you could have a couple of you could put a line of bombs. Maybe you need to do a sequence of chain events. But obviously, yeah. you don't. You know, if you've only got a four second timer as soon as you place it. That takes away that creativity um, in the game. Whereas in there, you could have one, two, three. You could either all light them or you run along and do a chain lightning. And I like how they're a bit Zelda-esque as well. You know what I mean? They're that classic big, big bomb that you're putting yeah. on the floor. It's identifiable, isn't it? And that's, yeah. that's what you want in games like this is, of course, you can make a bomb... Well, I'm not a bomb expert, but in, uh, they don't all look like that classic black sphere that we yeah. learn you know as as so but you do see even on this screen here there's still the ruins the glowing red runes in the yeah the stonework and there's like mushrooms and there's purple gems over there and can't wait to find out what these glowing rocks are yeah and it, there's even vines there you can see those vines growing yeah growing down the stones and stuff so like environmentally uh these these dungeons, mines, and all that, they look like they've got stuff in them. They're not generic. Four stone walls. Uh, there might be a couple of enemies in. There's a bookshelf. Like, there's actually... Stuff going on. Stuff going on, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if he's put those torches down. You know what I mean? I wonder if he's gone in and either lit the torches whilst finding them, or... Yeah, or if you just walk in, they're already lit. I'd like it if the if you yeah. had to light them. You know what I mean? So if give you that extra bit of you're really stepping into this tomb that hasn't been touched You don't in. know what's, what's yeah. been Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That that would be quite cool and, and would fall in with um like you think Minecraft Stardew, like you do place torches and stuff. Core yeah. Keep is another good example of that. Yeah. Where it ge it just gives you an element of surprise as well because you could come in, you light that torch, and then there's a big yeah. slimy news coming towards you, and you're like, ah, you know, like exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. I do, and I, I wonder, do like that. Wonder if that minecart is in operation because it looks like it's got power to it. You know, the the back at the top yeah. is like that track. It looks like that lever's got some power, so I wonder if you do sort of craft a cart or whatever, or you can place that cart back on the track and use it. To take you back up, yeah, it could be. It could mm. be. When, when you limit it to an instance and you have this kind of real adventurer bit of mild peril going on, there's so much you can do without it just being lots of enemies. Like, yeah. You know, you mentioned like jumping puzzles, you know, or, you know, there's like moving parts and you have to kind of coordinate someone switching on a switch and, you know, like that kind of, you can do a lot of things other than just, oh, there's another big boss. And I feel yeah. like, obviously we've not seen a lot, but I feel like they could easily approach that. Um, Definitely. Okay, what else is but past the, past the screen? I like as well how it, you know, the rocks are breaking up. This is not, again, or instantly is another interesting sight. It looks like you're in sort of Dracula's castle. We'll take it yeah. back to the vampire reference. <laughs> yeah. Well, it actually is like looking at there's some, something in that green uh, cylinder. Who's at the and back, there's yeah. also one that's broken out of the other one because that's smashed glass in that second chain. Yeah. So I wonder if yeah. that beastie is what you're fighting. I wonder if that's jumped out of that glass. It's come out from it. Yeah. Um, oh, right. What else can we see? We can see stuff on the table, books, and. And it does look like he's climbing up a, ca a tower because in the top left corner, you can see sort of a balcony railings. Yeah. So it looks yeah, like you're maybe not inside it. Yeah. 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 And that would be good. Like, one thing I do 
enjoy is when we have we we use the term dungeon quite loosely in most games now is a just an instanced place going up is just as fun as going down yeah, oh yeah like going definitely up a yeah. tower exploring a castle we always think of like when we say dungeon you immediately think well low level going yeah. down um, yeah but yeah a vamp a vampiric castle like and getting into the main hall and the chair like that would be amazing it would be class on it anything like that but yeah it's, it would be um i'd be all amazing. that of course um and I, yeah. the animation of this fire th- stuff that's getting attacked at you is amazing i'll yeah. say that as well yeah and we talked about the weapons as well like you can see here he's got a sword and the bit where it goes to the infernal demon i'll call him He's got um, it's a it's a very similar weapon to an AK forty seven. Yeah, so yeah, he's like, got yeah, he you has see yeah. It when he bangs yeah. up, um, yeah. So it, you know, it's an assault rifle of sorts. Um, so, so cool, kind of variations like we we touched on last time. I want to try and, and see where he's here. where he's come from. Yeah, he's come down from he's some down steps from there, hasn't he? Yeah, and those runes look. Mm. Dwarvish. I thought and that. I think they look dwarven. Man. And then when I looked, and that chest looks dwarvish. And when you go back to the bit, you know where he is using the bomb to blow the um the door off. Door open. The two fallen statues look like dwarves. They have pickaxes. Yeah, here, yeah. Um. Yeah, so, so it's like a d- like that. A dwarven, dwarven mind elements would be quite cool. I'm just flicking okay. through the frames here, and every frame is beautiful. The graphics are awesome. Like, the explosion, the lighting is very nice. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell what time of day you're at. The The glow of the, the torches and the glow of the runes as well. Mm. All, you know, it, it pours well, if that makes sense. The light pours yeah. rather yeah, than it, it does. being like a static of, it's this space. Yeah. I wanted to also talk about sort of how beautiful... Just, under this water looks like as well i know it's only on for a split second but the idea that we could also be doing some diving expeditions possibly i don't know if that's come uh confirmed or not but it looks like there's stuff going under the the water doesn't it so going on yeah yeah like some reefs corals in you could yeah you could find pearls you could find you could actually just find stuff people have dropped in, yeah, and having that underwater. Obviously, they wouldn't go too in depth with it being the angle of the, you know, yeah. it's not first person. Well, yeah, the clear, and it also lends to that kind of nice vibe, doesn't it? Clear water we associate as a bit of a nice like atmosphere, a paradise, a bit of oasis, yeah. yeah. I like it as well because even in this shot, you've got an animal in the top right on the grass as well, just like a deer or something. So it just again, all those animals that we spoke about last time are making that the world feel full. Oh, definitely. And the fish, I wonder. It be I don't know if they will, but wouldn't it be nice if the fish you can see in the water there, when you are catching fish, it is representative of what was in the water yeah not necessarily getting it onto the hook but you can see there's kind of a there's a yeah. couple of orange fish there and a blue fish like they are the fish you catch. you then catch yeah a blue and guppy an orange guppy one. yeah yeah because yeah, yeah, then you could actually really hunt nice. for like fishing like you know what i mean you could go be like yeah. all right there's the school of fish that i'm not looking for yeah you could be dry. That's it. You could be on your bike. You could be on your car. You're just going over the bridge, and you spot. And you think, "Oh, there's an eel, and I've not got that, or I need that yeah. for my log, or something like that." So the exploration side of it does actually encompass more than what just those kind of instances. Yeah. And they said there were island instances as well. So they're just in my head like open air open air dungeons yeah and what you in what difference can you do like we're saying you can go more vertical or just exploring the land you can have 
trees blocking off paths and exotic animals stuff like exotic that exotic animals un untouched tribes you know like uncontacted yeah. tribes who maybe are hostile towards you yeah. get a bit of their now that would be cool thinking about that that kind of um aztec amazonian inca yeah. vibe get some like tiki because that would make sense it that when you then you bring that back to your oh, house sort of thing bring that yeah. and you could have like a kind of tiki cabana vibe on the beach kind of that would yeah be well i'd love and that. it's worth noting as well in this trailer that you see two different types of boats you see this sort of rowing boat for fishing and yeah. then you see a motorboat when he's exploring in a second yeah. so yeah which is which is cool because I, I love having different equipment for different tasks and we'll come back to this screen in a second but yeah, yeah that that boat there is completely different yeah that looks out at sea doesn't it yeah rather than yeah a, a near shore body of... yeah so i don't think we'll i don't think we'll see anything other than that when we're that far out like i don't think you'll be no seeing anything under the layer because it's just too much it's too much to program it's no. too much to yeah, ask for of course but just having that as an option is wellness. And it'd be great if if you did go out exploring, a storm rolls in and, you, you know, the waves are harder to deal with. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, let's quickly, let's touch on the... Cause it, it'll be a shorter episode today because there isn't too much to speculate on, but it's nice. It's nice to get together and talk yeah, about this. But it is. Of course it is. This hunting scene, just on the horse, looks great. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. and here you're seeing a bunch of wild animals that they've mentioned. I'm just trying to find. So yeah, you've. It looks like you've got your two pet dogs, and you're chasing the bull. Yeah. yeah. And then. And then the deers jump. Yeah, in. and then the deers in the yeah. background. Stag, yeah. And again, the variety of trees. Like there's there's yeah. a lot to actually break out here. There's obviously the stone. Like I say, the idea that you've got more than one dog, like. Yeah. Helping you. Um, you've got the different foliage of the that kind of pinkish red tree in the top left. Then you've got your more typical kind of fir, pine, and then you've got these kind of nice, quite lush green, and as well as the bushes and the flowers. Yeah. You know, you've got white flowers, red flowers. Obviously, you don't have to, they don't have to be all interactable, pickable. But yeah. Just, it's the experience in it, and we talked about yeah. how nice this game looks. And that definitely lends to it, but yeah, they that you hunt you you're on the horse, and the horse is so detailed. Look at the vein on the horse's neck there. Yeah, like, you can see it, can't you? Yeah. But just like a top-down game, you you wouldn't I wouldn't expect that much detail, and just like the nice sort of different coloring in the the legs to the sort of body of the horse is well nice. Yeah, just and another just thing. Being able to pick colors you know like yeah. you said a lot of it will be customizable and the player the the not just the player models sorry the the models of the things in the game are de well detailed like i've yeah. not looked at and remember this isn't in beta we're still yeah. waiting on the kickstarter like to be able to have that now and be able to see how much effort and detail that they're putting into this can only bode well. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you know, and so. I wonder if the heritage system will work with animals like horses. Say, if you want to breed your horse, you know what I mean. I wonder if the cut, like, if you you know had two different coloured horses and you mated them, then you know what I mean. It'd have some sort of attributes from each. Yeah, and maybe you get like. So that's kind of like a creamy tan, isn't it? And then you've got yeah. maybe a, a black horse and maybe it is that kind of, it could either have black fur with maybe a, a tan mane, you know, like yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, exactly, so yeah. The stats there, that would be so cool. That would be, because then you could, if the player market allows, I know you said resources, but imagine if things like horses, you could breed potentially rare bright, yeah bright red horse like stuff like yeah, that like, and like it takes a lot of husbandry and a lot of time but imagine if you had and you went oh well i've got two of these now i could actually sell that and someone might go on to the player auction yeah like I, I will pay ten thousand 
gold or whatever, whatever the whatever, yeah. whatever the currency is going to be. That'd be that'd be quite cool because then that gives you an incentive to. Well, if that's what you if you just want a horse, farm if you or just to breed yeah, if that's or, it. Yeah, and if yeah, that could be your not your explore exploration of the game, but that's what you're doing is the side hustle to sort of keep yeah, it all the ex- branch. You know what I mean? Exploring, I guess, the genetics yeah. and the exactly, yeah. yeah. Anything else in that screen just before we shoot off? I think it's just more detailing of the world. Yeah. Just God, it looks good. Isn't it? Yeah, it, it looks great. This bit as well, man. obviously swimming, swimming about. Yeah. I wonder if this is the same area that we then get to in a second, but well, it doesn't look like I it because the water's different. The water is different, but, oh, yeah, but it that. does look like they've fallen. You know, like they've tried to do that jump and fallen in. Yeah, possibly. Around. Yeah, because that's that structure there in the water, isn't it, that we see there? Yeah, it's a, oh, yeah, it's of a course. One. There's the bridge. Yeah. Is it? So maybe look- they've... Yeah. Yeah, it looks, it looks like, like it. It from a... Yeah, it looks like He's it. He's come, like, under it, hasn't he? But... Yeah. Yeah, the I fact think it that is... you can swim... As well. Actually, you could swim. Yeah, great. I know. I know it sounds daft, but how many games do you get where if you're not on a boat or if you jump off, water is suddenly the most you yeah. know slay like heroic demons, and then you go into water and your character's like, I don't know how to do this. Yeah. <laughs> how yeah. do I swim? How yeah, do so I swim? Is cool. Yeah, and that would be good as well because, like you were alluding to, there could be secrets and stuff with that is an exploration in itself. Um, yeah. Things. I think I just spotted your dwarf here, Mike, on the left as he goes in. Let's have a look. There's a good one. If you yeah. look at him yeah, on yeah. the left there, that looks like a right dwarf, doesn't it? T- tell me tell me that isn't. Yeah. And that's cool. That's cool, because then again, that adds that kind of lore. Of, yeah. You know, are dwarves still about, you know? Very cool. Really interesting. Really interesting, and really kind of from what it shows in in this. And bear in mind, this isn't just an exploration trailer. This is no, yeah. This is just what we've cut out of the trailer. Yeah, yeah. Like the idea that you know what what untold wonders and depths is it going to go to for us? To be <laughs> exactly. Able to yeah. Yeah. See, so I'm re- I'm really excited to kind of. And like I say, it'd be interesting to see what rewards, you know, we get. It yeah. Could just, it could just be, um, I was just thinking then, like, a, it could be like a lost relic, you know, like a dwarven goblet or something. Imagine just displaying that on your little side. Yeah, thing. just like something and to put as an ornament. Yeah. Friends come round and like, where did you get? That really diamond encrusted, ruby encrusted <laughs> goblet from. Uh, it was my nan's. Uh, yeah. I don't, don't know what you're on about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, cheers for that. I hope you enjoyed it, Mike. And like I yeah, said, yeah, it's a bit, bit of a shorter one than the other one. But um, it was nice to delve into it because, yeah, that, that, all that stuff at the end of the trailer is what really shocked me when first seeing the trailer. It was just like, wait a minute, this farming game looks sick. And then, oh my God. They're they're now fighting a massive creature in a dungeon. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's, it's really good, and I look forward to seeing how how it does tie into the game. Because, like I said at the top of the episode, it's not your typical spin, and maybe this is the spin that we need. You know, these yeah. these kind of things can actually help define genres because. Yeah, it doesn't exist really at the moment. So yeah, we'll see. exactly. I'm yeah. really excited. Yeah. Well, hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any ideas of what these beasties could be, put them in the comments. It'd be nice to speak to some of the people who watch these videos. So, yeah. Um, like I said, we're both on Twitch at the moment, streaming V Rising, but hopefully we'll be streaming the ranchers. Who knows? Soon. <laughs> yeah, they they've said that there's news coming soon in the Discord. Imagine if it was the mayor. Woof. Right. Oh, All right, right. Until next time, thank you for watching. See you later. Yeah.